What we're gonna do is, uh, hopefully at this point, you have identified the importance of free body diagrams. If you don't get the free body diagram correct, chances are very good you will not get the problem correct. So what we're gonna do this time is just read the problem for 57, draw the givens, and draw the free body diagram. We'll solve the problem together, but I want each individual person to try to draw the free body diagram on your own so that you can think about what it is that you understand about this particular free body diagram. So take a moment, read the problem, and then draw the givens and the free body diagram. All right, so let's get the free body diagram. Uh, Andrea, give me a force in your free body diagram. Force of gravity going down. Force of gravity. Uh, Julia? Um, Matt? Um, force applied going at an angle of 55 degrees. It's given in the picture, so it's right there. Um, and who? Um, force of friction going to What kind of friction? Let's, we'll get there. Let's start with the kind of friction. Ian? It's kinetic, because it's moving. We, we know this object is moving. We'll get to the direction of the force of kinetic friction in just a minute. Uh, Stuart? Uh, there shouldn't be a force normal. Ah, there is a force normal. It's important to understand that there's a surface, so there is a force normal. Thomas? Force normal is always perpendicular to the surface, and it's a push, so it should be going down. It is always perpendicular to the surface and a push. The ceiling can't push up on this object, right? It's going to push down on the block. You guys are very used to force normal always being up. Class, is the force normal always up? No. Please remember the force normal is always perpendicular to the surface and is always a push. In this particular case, that means that the force normal is down. Just a second. Please draw two parallel arrows rather than one on top of one another uh, with one of these because it's really easy to forget that you have two forces so what you want to do is make sure that it's obvious by having two different arrows and two different labels. Matt? Um, your force of kinetic friction should be at 55 degrees from um, the surface because it's always opposite. What's the third one in the remembering the direction of the, the force of, of friction? Nate? It's that uh, it's independent of the force. Uh, it's independent of the direction of the force applied. You, you guys have this tendency to try to have it be related to the force applied. It's not. Okay. The force of kinetic friction, Chad, is, again, is why is it this way? It's always parallel to the surface. So it's parallel to the surface. It is independent of the force applied, and it opposes motion. What direction in is this object going? The right. To the right. We know that because the acceleration in the x direction is a positive 6. Therefore, it's going to be accelerating to the right. Therefore, the force of kinetic friction is to the left. So notice how this follows all of the rules that I've given for the various directions of things, but it's very different, right? It's a good one. I like this one. Okay, so we've done step one. We've drawn the free body diagram. What forces or force are we going to be breaking into components here on there? Force applied. Because? It's at an angle. You know, all the other ones are either directly in the x or y direction. The force applied is at an angle, so we need to break that into its components. I will do that today. We've done this many times. We have the force applied in the x direction, the force applied in the y direction. We can take the sine of theta that's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is the force applied in the y direction divided by the hypotenuse, which is the force applied. Therefore, the force applied in the y direction equals the force applied times the sine of theta. As I said, we've done this many times before. The force applied is 85 times the sine of our angle, which is 55 degrees. Therefore, the force applied in the y direction, please. Sixty-nine. 
Uh, that's funny. Okay, so, and that's in Newton's. We can do the same thing with cosine. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so the force applied in the x direction over the force applied. Therefore, we get that the force applied in the x direction equals the force applied times a cosine of theta, or 85 times a cosine of 55 degrees. Forty-eight point seven five three nine nine. You said forty-eight, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. So those are all in newtons. We've drawn our fruit body diagram. We broke the force applied into its components. Components. Sicarelli, what next? Um, we can redraw. Yeah. We're going to redraw the free body diagram. We still have the object. We still have the force of gravity and the force normal and the force of kinetic friction. But now instead of having the force applied at an angle, we have the force applied in the x direction and the force applied in the y direction. We draw our free body diagram. We broke things into components. We have redrawn the free body diagram. We are going to do what now, Hoover? Net force in the x direction, go ahead and move it. Uh, force, uh, sorry, oh, force applied in the x direction plus minus force in the kinetic force in the x direction. It's not kinetic force. I know, there's so many new terms. Don't worry, Christine's got you. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Go ahead. It's not that, is it? No. <laughs> Sorry, I, just... you were so, I know, you were so excited because that that, that's the one. But I was, I was hopeful. We were so close. Uh, help her out, uh, Duval. On the force of kinetic Rather than the coefficient, it's the force. So we have the force of kinetic friction. This is equal to what, Hoover? Good. So we have the force applied in the x direction, which we have a value for, minus the force of kinetic friction, which I don't know anything about yet. We have the mass and the acceleration. So force of kinetic friction, uh, I need to do something with that. Emily X. X, what's mu k called? Coefficient of kinetic friction. We have the coefficient of kinetic friction times force normal, which is the same as the force of kinetic friction. Looking here, uh, we don't even know what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. Is that correct? Yes? I didn't write that down, but that's what we're trying to find. Okay. Uh, force applied in the x direction, we know. We don't know the coefficient of kinetic friction. We don't know the force normal. What do we do, Victoria? Again, we don't know UK, we don't know force normal, we know everything else. Uh, well, we don't know that, then we just save it. We put it in the equation holster, and there, therefore, where do we go next? Uh, do it in the y direction. We're going to what in the y direction? You said do it in the y direction. I was looking for what the it was that we're going to do. Um, the same equation that we just did. I know what I'm looking for. What we're going to call that. It's so important that we use the words. Oh, net force. The net force in the y direction. Please sum the forces in the y direction for me. Uh, your chest. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we're switching forces in the x direction? Y direction, okay, I didn't see it. Um, okay, so the uh, force applied in the y direction minus uh, the force normal and force of gravity? 
What goes in front of the force graph? Minus. Okay. Just wasn't clear what you said. Equals. Oh. Nutrition, this is still you. Oh, okay. uh, mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Great. Elizabeth, what's the acceleration in the y direction of the block? We do actually know that. That's okay, Chad. I'm confused. That's fine. Can we can we finish this first? Like get this first, and then we'll come back to you. That's okay. I just want to finish this. Uh, Sam, it's zero because it's not moving in the y. Direction. Okay. Remember, the block itself is not moving in the y direction, so this is going to be equal to zero. Chad, you're confused about. Oh, never mind. Good. Okay. So now we have the force applied in the y direction minus the force normal minus the force of gravity. Uh, force of gravity we can substitute in mass times the acceleration due to gravity four. So we get force applied in the y direction minus the force normal minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity equals zero. We actually know everything with the exception of the force normal in this equation. Uh, so let's move force normal over to the other side. We get force applied in the y direction minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity equals the force normal. I believe I stopped at one point and I pointed out that I said that the force normal, which is equal to the force of gravity, which equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity, is not always going to be the case. True? True. Is that the case now? The force normal in this case equals the force applied in the y direction minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So please remember, you need to draw free body diagrams and sum the forces in order to figure out your different values of forces. Okay, so we have the force applied in the y direction, which is 69.6279 minus the mass, which was 4 times g, which is 9.8. Force normal, please. Okay, we have now figured out the force normal. If you look, going back to our equation holster, we know everything with the exception of the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Uh, we can plug in our numbers, I guess. So we'll go force applied in the x direction is 48.75399 minus the coefficient of kinetic friction, which we're solving for, times the force normal, which we just got to be 30.4279 equals the mass, which is 4, times the acceleration in the x direction, which is 6. Uh, I'll bring it up here, and we will subtract the 48 number from both sides. We get negative mu k times 30.4279 is equal to 4 times 6 minus the 48.75399. Divide, divide both sides by a negative 30 number, and mu k is equal to 4 times 6 minus 48.75399 divided by negative 30.4279. What, Elizabeth? Um, what are the dimensions on the coefficient of kinetic friction? Yeah, no. So we put no dimensions on that. Thomas, is this a reasonable number for the coefficient of kinetic friction? Yep. Because it's above zero and it's below, I think it was two. Something like that. You have two reasonable numbers. So this is clearly a reasonable number. Good. 